Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at my new Conklin Mini Graph with Stub Nib. I'll be comparing it to my Mini Graph that I've had for a few years now that has an extra fine nib. I'm going to ink both pens up with Murasaki Shikibu and do writing samples on my Hobonichi Weeks with cream colored Tomoe River paper. But first, let's take a look at the parts of the pen. It has a threaded cap. Now we've got plastic on metal threads. And on my original mini graph, I was kind of nervous. I'm, and actually on this one too, I'm very gentle and careful when threading the cap back on because I don't want to cross thread anything. That would be kind of easy to do. I've mentioned in an ink test that this one uncaps in around three quarters of a turn and you know that might seem nice but it it feels kind of unsecure like I think it would be easy for this pen to come uncapped in a pocket it is a pocket pen I like my original mini graph that it uncaps in just a little over one rotation, maybe one and a quarter almost. It just feels a little more secure. Another thing I noticed with this new one when it arrived, the this tiny little step here on from the barrel to the section was very sharp. Like they just missed a step in the production process of knocking down that edge because my original mini graph, I went back and checked it. It is very smooth, feels very nice, very pleasant to hold. So I just took a metal fingernail file and went around the edge a couple of times, and now it feels great. Uh, I think if it felt like this originally, I wouldn't have even noticed the difference between the two, but since I know that I did this one and this one came from the factory, this one does feel noticeably better. Now, my new one, you can't see anything with the naked eye. It looks very nice, but under a loop you can see some little scratches from me doing this myself. The nib is a tiny little stub nib. I tried it when I first got it. I tried it with Sailor Gentle Black, and I just really like the size of the line that it puts down. I write pretty small, so a s narrow stub nib is my favorite. It's a cartridge only pen and I've got a little Monteverde converter and I thought well that might fit I use this is the converter that I use with my Monteverde Ritma but you can see it's just too long I suppose you could get one of these converters and cut that down but now the part that you hold on to would be too short I believe yeah, you would have to cut it down to here. Yeah, that would defeat the purpose of having a converter. So it's cartridge only. And that's okay because if you look at these little converters, push converters, compared to a cartridge, a cartridge holds quite a bit more than one of these converters. The only downside, if you want to refill your own converters, that's what I do. I use an ink syringe and I just fill up old used converters myself. Sometimes I have had the opening here fail. It gets a little crack and it loses the vacuum that's in there so it alters the ink air exchange and you'll have your pen burp or drip ink out. So that's that's a downside. That's something to watch out for. But that hasn't happened very often. More commonly, the cartridge will just get loose after a few uses and you have to throw it away and use another cartridge. But the good thing is there are more and more choices now for cartridges that, you know, you can just buy cartridges and use those and not have to worry about bottled ink. 
Before I ink it up, I'm going to take a look at the nib. It threads out of the section and it's got this little ring. Hmm, hold on, I thought the ring came off. Let me check the other one. I think I thought this one came completely apart. Yeah, this one, the, the ring slides off also. So in all honesty, um, if a converter did fit in this, I probably would not want to dip it in ink because ink would get in all these little cracks and crevices. I would probably use an ink syringe anyway. Let me check again. Yeah, this one's just on there tight. I would say it's because this nib looks a little bit wider. So I bet this nib collar's kind of stretched out and there's just quite a bit more friction here. So I probably would not want to take this apart. I don't want to try to slide this little metal collar off because this plastic might crack. When I received this pen with the stub nib, the, and you might be able to see it here, the feed was kind of twisted off to the side quite a bit. It was noticeable, so I kind of worked with it a little bit. Like I mentioned, I wasn't able to get this nib and feed out to reposition it, but I was able to just kind of twist on it a little bit and get the feed scooted over but it is still off-center just a bit. And that may have something to do with the issues I've had with some inks that I've tried in it where the upstrokes are pretty dry. We'll see what happens with this Orochizuku ink. But I had similar issues when I got my first mini graph. Um, but the nib issues were a little bit more severe. The tines were out of alignment and the feed was also way off to the side. But this one I was able to take the nib and feed completely apart. I think I did. Let's see. I don't know. I don't think I pulled the nib and feed apart. I think I just took this collar off and it made it loose enough that I could straighten up the feed. But I did have to work on this nib quite a bit uh, to straighten up those tines and then to smooth it out a bit. I remember I was watching some reviews of this pen when it first came out and I think I was still waiting for mine to arrive. And I watched a video from a woman who said her nib was scratchy and the feed was all wonky and she sent hers back and got another one and it was a bit better and then when I received mine the tines were out of alignment and the feed was kind of wonky. Um, I think Conklin just has quality control issues so I would recommend if you're buying a Conklin pen um, and any of those brands, you know the ones that are have reputations for having issues like that. A lot of retailers will check it for you, so definitely in Conklin's case, I would recommend having the retailer check the pen for you. Well, I'm going to ink both of these up with some Orochizuku. It's a nice, flowy ink. We'll see if it helps with the dry upstrokes and the stub nibs. Now, since I've had issues with a sample of ink going bad, I'm going to check this one with my flashlight. It's nice and shiny. I don't see any scummy stuff. And I'm going to smell it. This one doesn't smell like paint, but it does smell like medicine. So there's some chemical in there. Uh-oh. It looks like, hold on, this is the ink cartridge that came with it. It's the same diameter. Okay, it's just 
a little bit of a tight fit, which that can be a good thing. It probably won't rattle around or come loose, but I just hope it doesn't get stuck in there. We'll see when I finish that one up. Now this one didn't fit as tight. It's like the inside diameter of this pen might be a little bit wider. Okay, it took a bit of shaking and tapping on the paper. That's one of the downsides of cartridge pens. Um, sometimes you can squeeze the cartridges and push a little ink through. That makes me a little bit nervous because I feel like I could compromise the structural integrity of the cartridge, but sometimes you just have to do that. I inked these up with ink from a bottle using a syringe, so I did dip the stub nib in the bottle to try to get it writing, but it just used up all the ink that was in the nib from the dip and then was dry again until that ink from the cartridge worked its way through. But they're both writing now, so let's do some writing samples. I'm going to begin with the stub nib. Now this finish I didn't mention earlier, this finish is the White Sands, and it's more opaque. I think it's completely opaque, and it feels nice. This was my first turned acrylic pen that I ever owned, and when I felt it for the first time, I thought, yeah, this feels different than injection molded plastic. Feels nice and grippy. The section is narrow and chrome plated sections don't usually work well with me. This is narrow by my standards and it's slippery because it's plated in chrome. But because it's such a small pen and a small nib, I can choke up to the threads and I'm holding on to the threads and a little bit on the barrel, and it feels nice. Now, I've been sitting here talking with the cap open. We'll see how it starts up. Just the tiniest bit of a hard start. The upstrokes are a little bit drier than the downstrokes, but nothing like I was experience, experiencing with this Monteverde Olivine. And I think I've, I've messed with the feed a little bit since then, so that could have something to do with it. And this might just be a more watery ink. I think it is more watery because I definitely hear the nib on the paper more. And this ink is known to be kind of a shading ink, but I'm seeing more of the lighter shades and less variation between light and dark. Reverse writing with a stub nib. It's a finer line. It's more scratchy. I could probably smooth it if I really thought I might can't talk and write at the same time. If I really thought I was going to need to do some reverse writing, I could smooth this out. And I might. It would be kind of handy to be able to write with a finer line. Okay, now I'm going to try, well, let me see how wet this is. Yeah, not very wet at all. It looks like the olivine may have even been wetter. It definitely felt more, more viscous. 
I recall when it was writing, when I was writing with this ink, it was smoother. It felt smoother, less feedback. Let me compare it to the extra fine nib in my first mini graph. I'm feeling less feedback, so I might need to do a little smoothing on this stub nib. Looks like it might be just as wet as that wider nib, which that makes sense. I mean, they're both using the same feed. This definitely has feedback. It feels like an extra fine nib, but it's not unpleasant at all. I feel like the stub nib might need a little bit of smoothing. Let me see what kind of reverse writing this extra fine does. This might feel smoother than the regular writing. Strange. Let's see. Reverse. Wow. This this regular writing has a pencil type feedback, kind of like you feel with Sailor Nibs and Platinum. But the reverse is nice, noticeably smoother. So this is a lot, well, this is supposed to be an extra fine. Really, this is more like a Japanese fine and the reverse would be an extra fine. This is a nice versatile nib. Actually, both of these are just a little bit of smoothing. Okay. Conklin gets a lot of flack for their um, attention to detail and I won't, I won't disagree with that. It is well deserved. Um, that's something that they definitely need to address. But, I don't know, at least this isn't a very large sample size. But for these two little pins, if you're experienced enough that you're willing to work on the pin a little bit, if you're not scared to do a little tuning to the nib, or if you've got access to some micro mesh that you can work on it, I kind of like these. Now, they are very small, very small grip section Probably not for someone with larger hands. I got this one originally to use with my traveler's notebook, but I was thinking earlier, I've got one of these little Filofaxes, the little Filofax notebook that I made a removable pin loop that I can move this from book to book or move it around, use it as a divider. Just got an inexpensive pen loop that has the little decal that you can stick it on your own notebook and when I tried it when I tried this pen loop with my mini graph first of all it gets kind of stuck there on the cap ring and I force it through but then this clip is really stiff and so uh, just not very usable with this kind of elastic pen loop so, I thought, well, I could use it with my traveler's notebook, but recently I got one of these zipper pouches for my traveler's notebook, and I would always just uh, hold my pen with the little elastic and kind of clip it under, put it under the clip to hold it in place, but I don't want my pen rubbing up against this metal zipper. So I got my rickshaw double pin sleeve, and I thought it would be nice to use both of these together. Now this is the regular size. I think they call it medium. It's a little bit large for these two little pins. Look, they're kind of lost in there, but they are held in place securely. You can really push them deep down into the sleeve. And if I want to throw these two in my purse, the elastic can hold it together. 
or if I just want to use a single pin, I do have a single rickshaw that I bought to use with my uh, Golden Espresso Caveco AL Sport, and well, it looks really good with my Traveler's Notebook, and it's the mini size. It's the Caveco Sport size. I don't know if it's mini or small. Whatever size fits the Caveco Sport, that seems to be the perfect size for this. And those two fit together. So I've got these two pens inked up now. I'm looking forward to taking them out and about and using them for the next couple of weeks. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.